Hi, it's another beautiful day in Cota de Casa, Orange County, Southern California. This is November. Take a look at the sky. Wow. This is Southern California, perfect November day. How about that? So I'm in the 10th fairway, so part three here, of our golf course. And our golf course doesn't have a clubhouse turnaround, so you go 10 holes down and eight holes back for 18 holes. So lined by these Peruvian peppercorn trees, Shinus mole on the right, and we have some cowdy brush. But I want to talk about this plant here that kind of aligns this swampy, disturbed area, and uh, this plant over here a little bit as well. So this guy here, I'll take this, this one here. This is a cowdy brush, Baccarus pilularis. It's a dioecious plant. So the males and the females are in different plants. So here's the male. Okay, he's got all the stamen, the anther, the pollen up here. And this is the female with the flowers that are coming out. Look at those little pretty flowers there. Wow. Anyway, this is a Baccarus pilularis, okay? This here, this plant is called mule fat. It's also a Baccarus. Baccarus salicifolia gets its genus Baccarus from uh, Bacchus, who's the Roman god of wine. He's always sitting in a bathtub drinking wine, eating grapes, and he's so plentiful and nourishing. Like these plants here, they have lots and lots of flowers for all the little butterflies and bees and other insects that like to pollinate. All right. And that's why he's called a Baccarus. He gets his name Salicifolia because his uh, leaves here, they look like, there we go, they look like willow leaves. And willows come from the genus or the family Salicaceae. And they're long, a little bit serrated, and they're dark green on top, and they're also dark green on the bottom. So a true willow is actually light green on the bottom. That's how you know this guy is a uh, mule fat. And look real closely. He has three veins. A vein on the edge here on top, a vein in the middle, and a vein on the right side. And that's another sign this is a mule fat plant. So he goes by a couple other names. Of our mule fat here. Sometimes he's called a seep willow, a jara, or a water wally. He's a perennial shrub native to California, as far north as Redding. And then you find him out in Nevada, Arizona, parts of Texas, down to northern Mexico, even as far south as Chile. And they grow about 13 feet high. And they're a lot more lush if you give them lots of water. And of course, they're more weedy and dried up looking when they don't get a lot of water. So, uh, what else I tell you about this guy? Well, he's um, a little bit sticky, okay? Not sure why, but he's a little bit sticky. And he comes from the family called Asteraceae. So he's related to sunflowers and daisies. So his flower here, Take a look right in the center, all right? So that flower is many, many flowers in one, okay? With all the stamen, the anther, the pollen, all the goodies in there. And uh, underneath, that little green kind of cup he sits in, it's called, these are special leaves called bracts. They hold the uh, little interior disc flowers together, help protect it. And uh, sometimes you get see little ray florets surrounding the flowers. Here's a big bushy one here. Now they typically they flower from May to July. But look at this. Well, these are already flowered, but they're going to seed. You can tell, but they're just bunchy here. The butterflies. They absolutely love this plant. And the flowers, of course, they're little small, fuzzy, white guys here. Got some more, and they're rather uh, prolific on this plant. 
He's very easy to grow. He's great for, uh, you know, soil erosion, which is ground cover or slope stabilization. He's called mule fat because uh, you can feed it to your mules, all right? And then if you're, uh, it's a famine plant too, so if you're really, really hungry and starving, you pull up some new shoots down here. These are a little older, but you got some new shoots and you got to grind them up and you could actually eat them. But I think that's uh, a bit of a sign of desperation. So medicinally, you get a concoction of leaves here and stems. You grind them up to uh, help treat uh, some feminine hygiene concerns. Here's one here. Look at these. See, they're going to seed. And you get these little tufts of seeds here that just float away in the wind. And then they uh, just re-sprout. They're pretty easy to grow. You grow them from seed if you want. You also cut off a stem here. And you could just uh, plant in some growth hormone. And the thing will come right up. Now otherwise, for medicinal purposes, you can take a concoction of uh, the roots and the stems, even the leaves, and you grind them all up, make a little pasty substance, you stick it on your open wounds, you put it on bruises, or uh, like insect bites, and it works pretty good at keeping down um, a little pain. And if you're going bald, how about that? Any bald people out here? You take the leaves, you grind them up, make a little hair tonic for your scalp. You can scrub your scalp with this, and uh, magically, your hair will grow back. Okay? It helps prevent baldness. And uh, you can make charcoal, okay, to make uh, gunpowder. And the, the magic of this plant here are the, uh, I'll call them the branches that come out. See how they're nice and firm and straight. So a couple things you do with this plant. As it gets really high, okay, you could tie the tops together, clean out the middle, and you make a little living hut out of this guy. So you could uh, kind of make a little homeless encampment down here if you wanted. And the uh, sticks here, they're uh, very flammable. So you do, you pull off all these sticks here, you cut it, okay? And then you could use it uh, as a little spinning tool, right, to make a fire, okay? That's what you do with this, like a, like a hand drill or a spindle. And you kind of spin it around with your dry leaves and a rock or two. You can make a homespun fires. Also use uh, all the sticks to make little traps to catch, uh, I don't know, bunny rabbits or little birds if you want. And uh, the Native Americans, they would use a real stiff one like this here. See how stiff this is? Now it's real lightweight, but what you do, you can make it into a little weapon. Or you put a little arrowhead on the end here, and then it makes a uh, like a short range arrow you can use. And you can build these up to make a little structure as well. Okay, he likes to burn real easily, so he's great for like kindling, and starter wood. Let's see, what else did I miss on this guy? I think I covered a lot. Some mule fat. So it's kind of a not very pretty plant, as you can see, but he's really, really essential for our California little chaparral and washed out areas. There's always golf balls down here too. Look at this guy. I'm going to show you a little forest we have over here. And then I'll show you a couple of uh, other locations on our golf course where we have our mule fat.
So right here is the green of our tenth hole. And this here is a whole forest of mule fat. Right here. We have old mule fat, new mule fat. These guys are, of course, uh, flowering here. Got the little lance-shaped willow-like leaves. And they get really big. You see this guy? They used to thick and big. The more they come out here in this little jungle area. Now this is also home of our mountain lions, so hopefully I don't get eaten today. We have three mountain lions here that I know of. Wow, look at this beautiful meal fat. We also have a lot of golf balls that um, people shoot over the green because they spear it or something. Here's a golf ball. Here's a practice ball. That's too bad. I don't have practice balls around. Get more uh, mule fat up here. Look how dense this gets. Just crazy. Wow. These are all practice balls, believe it or not. So you see how woody this gets? Down here in all this wood, right? You make bow and arrows, you make little traps, you make your little hut. You use it for, uh, you know, spinning wood to make a fire. Absolutely beautiful plant. This guy's probably 13, I don't know, 15 feet high. This whole brush. Wow. Let's go back here and take a look back here. See if we find one of our mountain lions. Or a bigger blooming mule fat. Let's see. A lot of people don't come back here. But it's kind of cozy. whole area. Big jungle. Big palm trees here too. Okay, all these sticky guys coming up. These guys here is all mule fat. And these guys are just, uh, they're so easy to grow and wild. They just grow out here for years and years. And when the uh, Great Depression hits and you're starving and famine, come out here and you chop down those little trunks down there okay you grind them up and you make a little mule fat stew okay or you feel you feed it to your mules maybe eat the mules instead so on our south course hole number four so par three here's the tea box and the green over here across the cart path this is all mule fat all this stuff here, just growing wild in this kind of marshy area. This is all mule fat here. And over here, this is our coyote brush. And they're both from the genus Baccarus, of course. And uh, the finches really love this plant here. Okay, our little munias that come from Asia. And the pin-tailed whita comes from Africa. That's where you're gonna find uh, living in this area right here and all this mule fat. So on our 12th fairway, here's the tee box. Here's the fairway. All along here, this is all mule fat. Look how high that is, I don't know, 13, 14 feet high. Wow. Anyway, see all the leaves here? It's all mule fat. The creek runs down here. All this here is mule fat. We got some uh, oaks and sycamores as well. But um, you see how proficient this guy grows here. Just wild. These marshy areas. Crazy. So along the 13th fairway here, all along the side here, all right, we have some more mule fat. Kind of just grows here right above the uh, mule patch like a little creek so it likes this whole creaky area all right you got these long lance shaped leaves they're dark green on top dark on the bottom that's how you know this is a mule fat but it grows uh, 
all along this whole area here. Tons and tons of mule fat. Wow. There's more flowers here. This guy here has a little fungus on him. See that? Growing those little bumpy guys. It's got a little fungus on him. Here too. Probably too much water from the overspray of our golf course. Anyway, this is our mule fat, Bacchus silicifolia, who loves to grow in our wash areas out in Cota de Casa. So, hope you enjoyed that video, and I'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.